In today's episode, we'll be joining blacksmith Peter Ross as he forges a thumb latch for the Washington House. Hello, I'm Peter Ross, and we're here in my shop, my blacksmith shop, in Silk Hope, North Carolina. I've been making some of the hardware for Ferry Farm, and I'm uh, going to talk about one piece today, which is uh, a thumb latch. And these kinds of latches were really common on 18th century doors. And I've started with <clears throat> an artifact, though it's not from Ferry Farm specifically. So this is a mid-century, perhaps first quarter, 18th century thumb latch. We've used this one as a prototype, and um, I'm going to make some that are based on that. One of the things I think is really important in good restoration is using the same kinds of materials that were available originally. For making this latch, I'm using wrought iron, which is the standard material for door hardware 200 years ago. Uh, this hasn't been made in this country since in about the mid-1950s, so the only way to get wrought iron today is through salvage. The first thing I'm going to do is reshape this piece into the proper starting size for the latch. My approach to doing good reproductions of forged pieces is to try to use uh, very similar techniques and tools. So I work mostly with hand tools. I occasionally use some power tools, but the character of the work depends on the processes that you choose. And so um, I've, I'm most comfortable and most enjoy working with a few basic hand tools. But I try to limit my tools to the same kinds of tools that were available. And also materials. Using wrought iron instead of modern steels changes the way the pieces look and weather and, and the shapes that turn out. And I think that produces work or can produce work with the character that's closest to the original. My role is to make most of the house hardware. Hinges, latches, uh, I make quite a number of the nails for the interior, um, locks, uh, shutter hardware, so just about all the forged ironwork for the building. The challenge here is to start with one of the artifacts from Ferry Farm and, and make certain that the reproduction matches the dimensions and style and character of what was found right on site, rather than being generic. Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting challenge. I like that specifically. Looking at the original latch, we can see that the grasp is nicely crowned, nicely rounded. Uh, and that's very difficult to do freehand. So. The normal approach for Smiths is to make a special tool that will accomplish that. And here is that tool called a swedge, and it fits in the anvil, and uh, it provides sort of the form in which to hammer the work. So I hammer on the back, and the front comes out smooth and round. I tell temperature by color. So when I'm trying to do a lot of shaping, I get the iron to just about its hottest safe range, right at the point where it starts to melt. And that's almost white. And then I can work it down to a dull red. Because I live in the 21st century, I can look this up in a book and I can tell that that dull red is about 1,000 degrees and that white is 25 or 2600 Fahrenheit. But I could go through my whole life as a smith and never know what those numbers are. Just work by color. Trying to capture the character of original pieces is the most, that's the most challenging and the most gratifying. And partly that's because capturing the character means 
looking at the originals so closely you can find every misplaced hammer blow and crooked edge and something that didn't quite turn out right and some things that did turn out right and and I see a lot of because I'm familiar with the work and the tools I see how those kinds of irregularities could have happened one of the details that makes this latch an interesting one and uh, and perhaps a good example of its time period is that the entire latch after being forged was filed bright and you can see the remnant of the filing on the cusp. See those old scraping marks and perhaps you can see the filing along the bevels of the cusp. And that kind of treatment, that filed surface over the entire cusp and originally would have been the entire latch surface, is pretty common in late 17th and early 18th century hardware. So after a little bit of filing you can see the contrast between the bright filed surface and the darker forged surface. And that's the, that darker color is the oxide that remains after heating up the iron. So in the aesthetic of the time, a forged surface, a rough forged surface, was the lowest grade of ironwork you could buy. Countless thousands of smiths could produce that. It was nothing special. So in order to make the surface of better quality, you would remove the evidence of the forging. How do you feel about being involved in this project? What does it mean to you? Uh, it's an honor for me to be involved. Partly, um, I, f I feel like a project like this warrants really careful, competent restoration. And to be asked uh, to participate is a great compliment, but also a great responsibility for me to do, um, you know, the best kind of restoration reproduction work I know how. And and my museum training for 25 years has, has uh, led up to this, I think. So, yes, I'm quite honored. <laughs>